someone at an unknown location carried out an experiment using this setup. A very light spring is compressed between a 35 gram block and a 10 gram block. They are held together right next to a vertical meter stick. And then they are released from rest in air. After being released from rest, the two block and spring system begins to free fall. Of course, only the system's center of mass follows the motion of free fall from rest because this is basically an explosion, so the two blocks will follow different paths. The motion of the blocks is recorded using strobe photography, so the positions of the blocks can be seen at regular time intervals. A velocity versus time graph is then plotted based on the motion recorded in the strobe photograph. In this graph, red dots represent the 10 gram block and the green axes represent the 35 gram block. Up is the positive direction. The 10 gram block gets shot upward, so its velocity is positive at first. The 35 gram block is shot downward so its velocity is negative. Part A. Based on the information in the graph, at what time was the two-block spring system released? Part B. Use the data in the graph to find the net external force on the two-block spring system after release. C. Use your answer in Part B to find the acceleration due to gravity at the experiment location. According to the graph, the system is released at t equals 0.02 seconds or very shortly after, and definitely before 0.03 seconds, because the graph shows that the blocks are still at rest before 0.02 seconds and no longer at rest at 0.03 seconds. Part B, we have to find the net external force on the system. We have information about time and we want to find the force. And we have information about the mass and velocity. So the impulse equation can be useful. Impulse is the average force times time. It is also the change in momentum because uh, this force we're looking for is the net force. Because we want to find the net external force on the system, that means that we want this force to be the force on the system. That means uh, this has to be the change in momentum of the system. We're looking for the force and the time duration after the release for the data we have is from 0.02 seconds to 0.12 seconds. So the delta T is 0.12 minus 0.02. Assuming that the release happens at T equals 0.02 seconds. And delta P is the final minus the initial. Initially, both blocks are at rest. So the initial momentum of the system is zero. After, both blocks are moving, so both blocks have momentum. The first block is 0 0.01 kilograms. 10 grams is 0 0.01 kilograms times the velocity at the end is 1 meter per second. The second block, 0 0.035 kilograms. And it has a velocity that is negative 1.5. So we can find the net external force to be negative 0.425 newtons. Negative means uh, it's a downward force. In part C, we're supposed to use this answer to find the acceleration due to gravity. Now, when the system is in free fall, the net external force on the system is the gravitational force. So this should be the mg of the whole system. So the net external force is 
m times g. That's the m times g of the whole system. So it's the the mass of both blocks added together. And I'm not keeping the sign over here because I'm just using this to find the amount for g. Because this m g is also downward, so supposedly this is negative. That is also negative. So the negative it will cancel anyway. We can plug in the mass. That is 0 0.01 plus 0 0.035 times g, and that means we can find g to be. So the g at the location of the experiment is 9.44 meters per second squared. Part D. If the experiment setup allows a determination of the gravitational acceleration that is accurate to within six percent. Is the value you found in Part C in agreement with the 9.8 meters per second square? Justify your answer. The 9.44 being accurate to within six percent means it can be plus 9.44 times six percent or. Minus 9.44 times 6%. So this gives us 9.44 plus minus 0.57. So the least acceptable value for G is 9.44 minus 0.57. The maximum acceptable value for G is 9.44 plus 0.57. So the G at the experiment location can be anywhere between 8.87 and 10. So it is possible that at the experimental location, the g is 9.8. At t equals to 0.12 second, is the spring still compressed and exerting force on the 10 gram block? Justify your answer. Yes, at 0.12 seconds. The spring is still compressed and exerting force on the 10 gram block, because if the spring no longer exerts a force on the block, the 10 gram block would only be under the influence of gravity. Therefore, it would have an acceleration that is the downward gravitational acceleration g. Acceleration is the slope of the velocity as a function of time graph. As we can see, the slope over here is still positive, which means at t equals to 0.12 seconds, the 10 gram block still has an upward acceleration, not the downward g.